Welcome to another PLC Hero troubleshooting tutorial for saving the day. In this session, you will learn several tips for finding an output and how to navigate through a program when troubleshooting. When it comes to troubleshooting, troubleshooting begins with the end, that is, the output. There are three reasons for beginning with the output. Number one, an output can be used only once in a program. Number two, outputs have a higher current than inputs, therefore have a greater risk of failing. And number three, it is far easier to navigate through a program to find out what condition is lacking to make an output true. In this example, we have a 10 horsepower 480 volt AC three phase motor fed from MCC 3J28 via contactor 243 and it's protected by a 60 amp fuses and overloads. The contactor 243 is sourced from a MicroLogic 1100 output module 1762 OW8 terminals O colon 1 forward slash 3 and common. After verifying that the output has zero voltage, we need to dig deeper and troubleshoot why the output is not energized. The program example we are going to look at has an output O colon 0 forward slash 1 that is required to energize a contactor for a 250 horsepower motor. A rare oddity is found in the project tree. Very few programmers will include this. If we scroll down in the program panel to input cross-reference and output cross-reference, searching for the output is simplified. All inputs and outputs are listed for quick reference. Going to the output cross-reference, it takes just a few seconds to locate the crusher motor run output. A close second to this method is using the cross-reference in the data table. This is a cross-reference for everything used in the program. You can sort either by the symbol or by the address. We're looking for O colon 0 forward slash 1 crusher motor run. Sorting by the symbols which are in alphabetical order we can scroll down to Crusher Motor Run. Double click on the OTE and you are directed to the output. If you sort by the address, double click on O colon zero forward slash one OTE and again it will take you to where it is used in the program. Another way to locate an output is by using the output data table. Open the output data table and park on top. Place your cursor on the bit of the first output word. The tip pointer will display the verbiage of that bit. Going to position one, you see crusher motor run. Right click and find all. You should see only one usage of this output bit. Another way is to use the search window under the title bar. Enter the address O colon zero forward slash one and click on the icon with the binoculars and a folder. Clicking on it, the program will open a status box on the bottom of the screen. Click on O colon zero forward slash one and it will take you to the output. Enter the symbol Crusher Motor Run, click on the binoculars with the folder, and the bottom screen click on O colon forward slash one 
And again, it will take you to the output in the program. One more way to find an output is by going to the title bar. Under search, you can locate the output by entering the address or the symbol and selecting find all. Note, be sure the global is checked and not local. Global will search the entire project, while local will be in that subroutine only. Now that you've found the output, you're ready to navigate and troubleshoot the problem. In rung 005, output O colon 0 forward slash 1 requires B3 forward slash 7 250 horsepower oil pump motor to be true for the contactor to energize. Toggling the bit is to no avail. Next step is to find out what is needed to make B37 true. Place your cursor on B37, right click, and find all. There are numerous XIC and XIO associated with B37. We're not interested in how many times they are used. We want to make B37 OTE true for B37 in rung 0005 to be true. Click on B37 OTE and you see that B316 oil pump pressure switch preventing B37 from being true. Right click on B316, find all, click on OTE B316, and you see the pump pressure switch is preventing B316 from being true. If you toggle input I colon zero forward slash five, the bit remains false. Be sure to see the tutorial on understanding the functionalities of inputs and outputs. 90% of PLC problems are related to real-world inputs and outputs. Further investigation of the pump pressure switch is required. Thank you for watching this tutorial and be sure to leave your comments. If there are subjects you would like to see, please let me know. Please be sure to visit plchero.com for our virtual hands-on training using the MicroLogic 1100 processor with the RSLogic 500 emulator.